There's also, and I think Bernard can kind of integrate a little bit of his knowledge into the year, but command with that um, kind of multi-purpose thing has rooms. Um, so with DocuSign rooms that we'll kind of talk about a little bit. The majority of stuff today that I'm gonna reference, I'm gonna try to tell most agents, don't do this on your own. Um, as much as you can bring in a TC to save you time, that way you can focus on actually production, you're gonna be much better off. This is beneficial to know and understand in case you hit that weekend or those off hours. Um, so definitely understand and know it, but the majority of stuff in regards to the time consumption, um, teach someone else or have someone else do it because this shouldn't be where you spend the majority of your time. This is what I would consider more admin time. So we'll go over quickly. Um, and it, like I said, if there's any questions or thoughts, please feel free to interject. Um, so to begin, basically what I'm going to kind of go over and, and Bernard and Sadie had a great point is right now we're sending a ton of PEDs. So if you're working with any buyers and they're trying to see multiple homes, you're having to send out a lot of PED forms. Um, one of the ways to minimize the total time for that is just to create a template. That way when you can go back to it, it'll auto populate and make it really easy to send. So what I will do right now is go ahead and share my screen. Make sure I'm on the right screen. Um, so when you start, you basically want to start from, um, you know, zip forms is the easiest way to get those forms and access to it. So in this case, I'll kind of open up a file. Maybe. Yep. Um, now I would go to all my forms and then pick the one that I needed. In this case, I do already have the P form accessible. So I'd open it up, um, put whoever's name that I need to. Um, like we mentioned at the very beginning of this, there are plenty of, there is plenty of room here. And for the agents on the call. You can, put, you can put four or five properties on that, on those two lines there, Dominic. Yeah, so perfect. So one, two, three, four Main Street, um, you know, and then you can kind of go into the next one, um, four, three, two, one, four, three, one, two, Apple Street. Um, so be able to populate that way. Now, once you do that, usually what I'm going to reference is just to save as PDF. Um, once you save it as PDF, you can either save it to the transaction or to my device. In this case, what I'd recommend is saving it to your device. That means to your computer. Um, so we'll kind of go over that. You can save it there. Didn't know that. Yeah. So I can click to download the PDF. Now, the reason I'm doing this is just for later on. Um, and in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave this blank. So what I would do is I would have this blank, basically kind of leave everything blank unless there's exceptions to this. I'm going to leave the both clients names, my name, um, and then I'll go ahead and save. So I should have a safe copy um, in one of my other forms. So from here, you can get through, or you can get to DocuSign through command, or you can just sign up into command. So if we just... So you were in zip forms, correct? I was in zip forms. Okay. So zip forms just gives me that initial file. Okay. The initial document. Um, so now when I go to create a new template, so now I'm in DocuSign. Um, can everyone see that I'm in DocuSign? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so just to kind of give you guys a heads up, um, this is your homepage of DocuSign. You log in. This is what you see. All I did was go to templates from there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start a new template. We'll create one. Should have one on my desktop. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically take the form that I had created and I had it here. So I'm going to upload that. And this is just going to be, so let's say my client, um, client one peed. So this form should be a blank and you can kind of see it here. It's just a blank property address. Um, and then it has the client's name. 
this is basically just to kind of save time down the road. So if you have that person who said, Hey, I really want to see a property. All you've got to do is pull up DocuSign, go into this template, put in the address and then just send. It just kind of try to, tries to minimize the time of having to go through multiple steps. Um, Where are you going to add the address, Dominic? Yeah, you, you got it. So, um, so the, I'm going to set kind of the people that I want to sign this document. Yep. So I'm going to be the first one. So buyer agent, um, Dominic Cava. In this case, I'm just going to um, basically just make a buyer one. And I'm going to make this thick um, and then send it to my email. So now when I go through this, now this can be, again, as you create bigger templates, you can add whoever is needed to these documents. But right now, obviously on a P document, you're solely looking at uh, agent and buyer. If there's multiple buyers, just add a second one and make them buyer two, name, test two, and then their email. Um, so what we're gonna do from here, like I said, we're kind of basically a blank document with the client's name. Um, I go to next. So in this case, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna create just a blank text box there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so what the benefit of this is, what you're gonna get is on your agent side, this is gonna be required text for you to fill out to move forward. This is kind of the only time on the front side that you're gonna be putting all this time and effort into it with going into saying, okay, I'm an initial here, I'm an initial down here, and then I'm gonna sign, and then I'm gonna date. The benefit of doing this up front and right now is that moving forward, the next time I pull up this template and I send it out, it populates all these things right away. So there's a little bit of front end work, um, but like most people, when you work with a buyer, they don't commonly purchase the first home and you're gonna end up doing this kind of a handful of times. Um, so in this case, like I said, I would put the signature for them, I'd put the date, and then I'd go make sure I put the initial there. So we save and close. So now I have client 1P. Um, so in this case, like it, if I was working with Bernard, I would just put Bernard P. It'd be my simple template that I do almost kind of my first, um, my first point where we start to search for homes. Because then the next time Bernard says, hey, I'm, I'm looking at this property. I say, perfect, let's use that. And what it should do is it should automatically populate myself, Bernard, whoever is needed, um, all the emails that they're going to. And then the nice thing from here is when I do send it, um, I'm not gonna like that, that's okay. Um, I can, you know, change the subject to, you know, one, two, three, four, Apple Street. When the client sees it, they say, perfect. This also kind of helps you um, just in the case where you don't sign right away. You're in a situation where you're like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this out. Once they sign it, I'm going to react to it. Um, but it should give me the option right now if I click send. Um, maybe. It's not letting you change the address. The recipient must have an name and email address. Um, maybe it doesn't like that I have both. The um, other thing it doesn't give you right there, Dominic, is you, you're not able to change the property address because the form, the form is- second, You'll see it. Okay. Yeah, but, but yeah, thank you for bringing that one up. Um, so this is quality technology. Let me try one more time here. So if I use this, this is a client one peed. Let me remove that one just in case. And I'm gonna say Apple Street. Perfect. So what it's gonna populate is basically sign now. Um, my recommendation is try to sign things now or else they'll get backlogged in your emails. So if I go to sign now, what it will populate is this first address. 
So that as the agent, you'll automatically say, oh, yeah, this is the Apple Street in Danville. Um, all of a sudden, you've got that populated. You go to next. It forces you to initial. It forces you to sign. It forces you to initial. So this is a way that, like I said, there's a little bit of front load time. But the benefit is you're not having to go every time back into zip forms, putting the property address, putting this stuff. You're in a scenario now, so I can finish that. No, it doesn't make it. You're in a quick scenario now where when your client says, hey, you know, I want to see these properties, all you do is go to templates, you go to your client name, client name peed, and then you just hit use. You say, perfect. You want to see five properties? Awesome. I'm going to send this to you. I'm going to type down all five properties. It'll get sent to you. It'll get sent to them. You have the documents and then you can shoot them to whoever you want to. So here's a note that just occurred to me, Dom. Yeah. <clears throat> when you put in email addresses and names on the signature page or the recipient page, mm -hmm. you can put in the order in which they sign. Correct. Right. So in your case, if you haven't populated an address, you need to put yourself first. Because if you put um, yourself second or third, it's going to go to the buyers with no address. It's going to go out simultaneously with no address. So you put yourself first, you get to edit it, then it goes to them with your notes. Correct. So yeah, the, the timeline of that, um, yes, they may see a document with zero addresses. Okay. It's not a scenario where they're not going to be able to complete those addresses. Though. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. But, but yeah, absolutely. You, if, if you are concerned about your buyer going, hey, you don't have any addresses, what the hell are you doing? Um, then you, then you can first. In a lot of cases, like I said, if you're signing right away, don't worry about the setting order. Um, if you're someone who's like, hey, sign this and then I'll sign it, you can set order. Um, you can do however you want it to. Okay. Um, one component that I found interesting in the DocuSign situation. Let's see if I can. Uh, so along those lines, any questions or thoughts with that? Um, the sequence of steps basically for me is, and, and you can do it on a completely blank form. If you wanted to do it on a blank form, you're going to uh, modify it just a little bit differently. Um, so if I, so I set the roles here, we're going to say we just have two roles. Um, if my form was completely blank, what I would do is this text box is open and needs to be completed. If I want to just put in my name here, I can complete the text and it will auto populate each time for the template. So what I could do is if I just had a blank form, I could complete my name here. And now each time we utilize that template, that name will show up. So if you have a completely blank zip form, that's perfectly fine. You're just going to integrate the text at the beginning. Um, for me, in this case, I just used uh, zip form to put my name and then I uh, pulled that document or downloaded that document. Um, the other component is, can I come back? Yep. And it doesn't really show that I can do this. So sometimes you'll go through and you'll put kind of things backwards almost. Um, and there is a way that actually I don't see right now. Um, oftentimes, if you're going through DocuSign on a, on a form and you are, let's say, you put everything under your agent signatures and then you realize oh shoot it's supposed to be under the buyer um sorry about the dog in the background um there's oftentimes on the right hand side where you can actually switch all of those signatures which i just don't see right now um 
there we go. So let's say, um, like you had mentioned initially, Bernard, that I had put in that and I had actually left it incorrectly to my buyer, Nick, instead of Dominic. The blue uh, says yellow. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I know I've gone through times and I'm like, oh man, I, you know, I put the wrong signature on the wrong mm -hmm. side. Just, right. just go ahead and click it and be like, oh, that's not supposed to be me. That the recipient of that is supposed to be this individual. Uh, so there's ways to simply modify it rather than having to erase it all and go back and change. Um, so, yeah. So that was a very quick, simple version of being able to do a PED form. Um, Bernard, Chris, anybody, questions, thoughts? I don't see the chat. So. One, one of the things that I do, Dominic, that makes it simple for my mind, obviously everybody's a little different, is when I'm in zip forms, I, do, I use the cover sheet exclusively. You yep. do the cover sheet, it populates it. It's so simple, right? So then when you pull up that file in zip, you have all those forms and it's already populating your name, your address, your BRE number, all of that stuff is already in there. So I always populate my forms from zip and then move it to DocuSign as opposed to being in DocuSign and doing it that way, personally. Yeah, absolutely. So I learn and it's, 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 it's like five clicks and I'm done with that one. Instead of a template like you're doing, I like the template idea. But what's interesting is when I do it in zip, now I've got a copy of that PED in my zip form file that I can go find. It's already completed because once it comes out of back of DocuSign, it goes back into zip completed. Yeah. So, um, for instance, yeah, what he's referring to is when you are in in a folder or DocuSign um, and what you can do is you can create in all forms here a cover sheet and highly highly recommend it okay. now I, I've overall usually have pretty good response to it sometimes I'll, I'll finish a cover sheet and there's still some issues but if you're opening your cover sheet what it's going to do is it should populate a lot of this information by your name street address. Sometimes what I run into challenges with is even if you put the buyer name, it sometimes doesn't populate that signature or that initial space. Um, if it works well, then you're perfect. Um, you know, if it doesn't, then you have to just make sure when you send out that document that those initials are in the right spot. Um, I, I'm sure, like you said, Bernard, you've been doing this for a while. You kind of understand the steps to make sure that when you do send out those documents, they are populated correctly. Um, now another way, uh, sorry, I just, I have another question. Yeah. So if you do this cover sheet, mm -hmm. then you would put it into the transaction that you're working on. So you would do this for each transaction. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. And then it should auto populate at one point versus filling out. Let's say you're doing an RPA versus filling out each line on the RPA. Yeah. So what I say almost before you do an RPA, um, is, is do the cover sheet first. Okay. You're going to double check all the information in your RPA, but a lot of those are going to be auto populated when you're able to put in, you know, sell a name, address. Um, it, so a lot of this stuff, I'll put the majority of stuff, MLS numbers, tax IDs, parcel numbers, kind of simple ones that you can populate with. Some of this other stuff I'll kind of leave blank because I'm going to review that a couple times within the RPA. Um, but yeah, I mean, Bernard hit it on the head and kind of the goal of this little simple lecture is do a lot of the stuff on the front end so you don't have to repetitively do it every single time. Yep. The cover sheet's a great way to minimize that. So I've been doing that with um, on the side of a transaction. It'll mm -hmm. say like buyer, buyer one, buyer two, buyer three, and all the information. So I've, I've been doing it like that, which has been a a lifesaver, but this seems a little bit easier. So I will definitely do this instead. Yeah. You do this, Francis, the way, the way uh, we're, we're looking at it is if you populate the cover sheet, everything that you've got in there, like Dominic's got his agent stuff in there already. The DRE numbers go on the right-hand side. It's all there. Any form that you do, whether it's a, a, a paid form or a, a counter or a um, residential listing after sale, I mean, it, it populates everything every time. And 
Bernard, I do have a kind of a follow-up question to that. Uh, so I haven't had a problem with it populating zip forms. The things that I've had challenges with is when I go to eSign, it populating signature and initial spaces. So I have my DocuSign connected to my zip forms. I don't use the zip logic one at all. Okay. So when I click that top left button, it says eSign, yep. it takes me through some steps. I have to decline the email names and addresses that are in the cover sheet. Then it takes me into, into DocuSign and all I got to do is populate their names and addresses as recipients in DocuSign and send. Then your signature spaces and initial spaces are just fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't even know how to do that. Sorry. I'm super green. <laughs> so how do you connect DocuSign to your zip forms? Uh, good question. My TC. It's already, is My it already connected? <laughs> there, there should be, um, I mean, the, the fact that you, there is this button here, you That's already right. do have a connection and a link there. Sorry. Now I'm going to, sorry, go ahead, Bernard. Yeah, see where it goes. Yeah. So if I go to eSign this, well, hit it twice. Um, hit the back button. Yeah. Which you wouldn't really necessarily. So let, let me let just Francis to show you. If I say by your name, um, yeah. Uh, and then I put email address as so I'm going to save the so this is right now the cover sheet so if I save the cover sheet I should have a buyer and a basically buyer's agent which is me so I'm going to go back and let's say I want to get the PED and I go to e-sign the PED um, sorry, I've got stuff covering. It says in the middle right there, signing services, DocuSign. Yeah. Right, not digital, not digital logics, which is the, which is the free one from Car. Now, obviously, we get free doc, DocuSign from KW anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I'm going to okay. use the DocuSign. I have the form. I go to next, and like. So uh, right here, Dom. Right here, say close. Mm -hmm. Say close. Now hit next up on the top right. Take me to DocuSign. Correct. Straight into DocuSign. So now all you have to do, the form's going to be there. I think. Yeah. It said it was. There it is on the right. You can see it on the right over there. Yeah. So yeah. now going to add recipients on the top left. Same thing you did when you were doing it earlier. Francis, it might already be connected. If you look at your, if you're done. Now you Yeah, I'll, I'll look. I have a private account. Um, I'd like to be using the free account so I don't have to pay for it anymore. <laughs> Let's, switch it over for you. Let's switch it over for you. So here's, yeah. So now you're at the same place you were before, Dominic. It's already populated all your names at the bottom. It should have. Correct. Now the challenge that I'm running into is the signatures here. No, so you, so open your drop down for your name. Address, just drag your signature. So yeah, and, and this is the whole part of dragging this. Because what you're going to reference is, and actually what it's trying to do right now is it's- It will have to do it if you ask it to, yes. Yeah. So if you have a template, and, and you're, you're spot on, this is definitely the way you do it. It auto-populates the names. It just doesn't always auto-populate the correct signature and- um, They signed all that. And initial, yeah. So yeah, the dynamic is- if you're able to create this and you create the template, the template the next time is going to auto populate that specific form that specific way with those signatures and that initial and that date sign. Correct. Agreed. So when you, yeah, when you send it out to your client, you're not going to have to worry about, cause this is what I was running into. And I was doing single form peds every single time. So I was doing one address, dragging signature, dragging date, dragging initial, 
next form, dragging signature, dragging date. Um, so if you can just create that template initially, and one of the ways you can do that is <coughs> by doing cover sheets at the, at the forefront, um, downloading that document or saving as the PDF, populating it into your DocuSign, and then each time making it really efficient. Do you have a, Dominic, this is Lisa, do you have a template for specifically set up for buyers and one specifically set up for sellers that you already have your information and that's what I did in the past, but now it, that's one question, I'll stop. That way it's already populated with all of your information and as the listing agent and or the buyer's agent. And then when you, when you open that, it should have like all the forms that you need associated with that transaction in that cover sheet for a template as like the main template. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that there's would all, kind of that would all be in zip forms, Lisa. Right. So I'm just saying, if you set all that up first, yeah. do that. Yeah. And yeah. If you so do, if, if you do all that first, then when you have a client that wants the PED form, then you just would go to that template and you could grab the PED form and then make that particular transaction about that client, right? Yes. I'm sure. Spot on. Yeah. So there's, there's two kind of dynamics that we're, we're referencing here. The first one is the population of the correct documents with the correct information. Right. The second thing that we're referencing is getting the signatures of those documents. Um, so, and, and like I mentioned, use your TC. Uh, <laughs> the majority of this information is so you have an understanding of you know, the, the steps needed, the steps taken, if you have that off time where you don't use, utilize a TC. But yes, at the beginning, you should have a template, you know, populate specific documents that you're gonna need for a transaction. In the case, we all need P trans documents. Um, and yeah, to your statement, the, the first step that I would do is I would create a cover sheet for all the information, whether it be seller or buyer. And then the second part is I would create a template, especially on the selling side of what documents are required and needed. Yeah. And those would auto populate. Um, I have one more question for you. Please. With respect to uh, Keller Williams specific um, forms, mm -hmm. are we, are you using only the forms in the zip forms, like the car, uh, car based contract forms, or is there somehow, a Keller Williams specific document that you're also rolling into this. Yeah. So there's definitely uh, the majority of forms through car and zip forms. Um, there are additional disclosures that you need to go through Keller Williams for. Um, okay. And I am not the best person to ask. Okay. Chris yesterday and other. at the meeting, Jim Meach said he had a folder with all of the Keller Williams forms. And if you emailed him, he would send you that and you can add that to your car. Yeah, so th that would be something to be very beneficial for you to, again, you can use DocuSign to load it, to put text into it and to save it to that client. And then you can send it out. Um, now, just to give you guys more information, because I know that's exactly what you guys want. Um, when you are in DocuSign, somewhere here, there is this box on the right. Let's see. Um, on this right hand side that has rooms. So rooms offers the opportunity and this is also you can go through command for this. Um, but rooms offers you the opportunity to actually do things like a cover sheet if you're not utilizing zip forms as much. Um, so I personally just use zip forms cover sheet, but this is another way to create a document that will auto populate those sections. Unfortunately, I haven't done enough of it to actually give you guys a solid, here's what to do, here's what not to do. So I don't want to push you guys too much. But because we do have the link to DocuSign through command, um, it is definitely a way uh, to get comfortable. The other nice thing is it sounds like, and Chris can kind of give his insight on this, we're gonna be moving more towards all signatory going through command and opportunities. 
So the um, utilization of things like sky slope and green sheets are going to start to dissipate. So if you can get a little bit more comfortable with DocuSign, its integration will be very helpful moving forward. Does that sound about right, Chris? Yeah, I have, I have two questions. One, one is a thought, actually. Okay. You guys can figure out DocuSign because um, I'm impressed. I can't figure out DocuSign only because I don't know anything about DocuSign, but you guys give me such a hard time about figuring out command. I feel like command is so much easier. I just think it's funny. Um, the second thing is, yes, we are in the process, like Office was, um, trying to download all the SkySlope files just so that we have that easily ready. And then we're looking to completely move in just because uh, KW is they were going to move us before, but uh, we, they delayed it. So we had a little more time to completely switch over all the systems to um, opportunities. And that usually means that we're going to host like a ton of classes on opportunities so that everybody learns um, what you need to know. Katie and Cindy will kind of be leading the march on that. Um, They're doing construction on the apartment. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, Lisa, can you can you ask that question and see if I can maybe walk you through it? Sorry, yeah. Um, you started to show us how to change, uh, once you fill out the form and you said, oh, I need to change it back to another party. Like I made the, you had like the blue for one thing and then you said it should be the yellow. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know why that would, I've. The easiest way to do it is, I'm sure it's very straightforward, but I just missed the, what you were trying to imply. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, if you were in zip forms or you're trying to get a signature there, uh, yeah. let's close this, and you had just populated incorrectly. So let's say you had, you know, you put, you're putting all the signatures in. You're putting buyer one, you're putting your agent, yourself, and all of a sudden you realize you just populated everything as buyer one as your signature. Um, when you're in the actual DocuSign or working with a template. So this is why sometimes, sometimes you're able to populate these very cleanly. Uh, this is one of those areas where cover sheets can really help because as you saw last time, if I don't put anyone in here, it'll show up as a kind of a blank document in regards to this signature and in initial spaces. If I do add people's information, what it should show up as is at least one or two spots. Um, so hypothetically, let's say I'm looking at my client, Melissa, but I'm thinking it's me and I go through the entire document and I'm doing signature stuff like that. And then I go to come finish it and I go, oh shoot, I put everything backwards. Um, so let's say I put Dominic under Melissa, Melissa under Dominic. All I need to do is click on that and then change on the right hand side, the recipient. And this is just a scenario where maybe you have multiple people, maybe you're in a scenario where you're asking the seller, you're asking, you know, multiple signatures, you're requesting uh, from the broker's agent, all those things. Just go to the box that has either been populated or you have populated for signatures or initials. And on this right hand side, just change the recipient. Did that kind of answer your question? Yeah. Wow. Yes, thank you. I never cool. knew what that was for. Mind blown. Totally. Yeah. Um, now what you're seeing right now is the matching templates here. So this is where templates can be really beneficial because if you create one, it's going to try to pull every time. Um, so let's say I go to apply. What it should do is it's going to populate the signatures in the right spot. It's going to populate the blank space, it's going to populate the initials. That's really where, like I mentioned before, you're just going to save a lot of time. Um, 
because it's going to want to do all the right things for you. It's like, oh, you've done this before. Hey, are you sure you don't want to use this template? And I haven't necessarily um, open quote unquote DocuSign through this. I've just used my zip form. I went to populate through zip forms. And in doing that, opening DocuSign, DocuSign said, hey, you've done this template in the past. Why don't you use this again? And that's a scenario where, like I said, it makes it really simple because you don't have to go through and drag and drop. Um, so yeah, I, I made a kind of a simple process, very complex. So I do apologize about that. Um, we kind of went in a little bit circuitous, but any thoughts or questions as it relates to that? Makes sense to me. I think okay. you did great. So just, just a summary, and, and there were some tremendous points brought up, Francis, Bernard, Lisa, thank you guys for, for, um, for being involved with it. Um, the first thing we pointed out is if you're in zip forms, you've used your cover sheets. Cover sheets will save you a lot of time through the transaction because they will auto populate a lot of the boxes and forms that you're gonna be having to utilize. Um, the second one is forms that you're gonna have to use what I would say repetitively, I would create a template for those forms. <clears throat> and like you saw, DocuSign will start to tell you like, hey, do you wanna use this template for these forms? Um, like I mentioned, an example of that would be, is if I'm doing the PED and <clears throat> I go through and I say, okay, this is, you know, it's got the information on it. Let me go to e-sign it. And I know that I've already done the template. And um, I'm gonna put the two people that I have populated there just because it has their information. I go to next. What we should see, and my fingers are kind of crossed, um, is that we actually get DocuSign to say, hey, why don't you use this template? Now, I could just go through and go into DocuSign and use template. But in this case, if I'm just happen to be in zip forms um, and kind of going through what I should see within a couple seconds here is if it wants to use the template and maybe it won't, we'll see. Unless that's actions. Um, maybe not. Sometimes it'll populate as, do you want to use this template? Um, and like I said, when you're able to do that, it comes in as saying blank form and everything that you've done before that. My recommendation is once you've created the template, just go through DocuSign. It's one less step. It keeps everything really clean. I like how I did it once and not this time. That's how it is every time I teach a class. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, that is pretty cool. It, it's actually almost forcing me to use a template um, that it has created because I don't. Yeah. Um, so disregard what I just said. Uh, <laughs> there we go. So in this case, it's trying to, you can see that, correct? Yeah, so it's trying to apply the template that you've used before. I can say, perfect, let's use that one. And then it now will populate everything that I was gonna waste my time with and add into. And then I just put the addresses. Um, actually, I, I don't necessarily wanna put the address right now. So this is the document um, and kind of what Bernard had mentioned at the beginning. This is if I have multiple addresses, <clears throat> once this gets sent to me as the agent, not the client, I get to fill this out. And so I can fill this out with, it sounds like four properties um, or as up to many as you can fill in that line. But the benefit of the template is I didn't have to drag and drop all these initials and these signatures. So templates for forms that you're going to use multiple times can be really beneficial and efficient in regards to that and the nice thing is it's going to populate that every time um, so it's going to populate in that style two signatures the dates um, 
And then you're really just at the beginning when you put recipient that decides on where it goes to. So, yep. Hey, Dom, two things. Yeah, please. Um, one, um, on the address lines, um, I, I don't think you're limited. I think if you get to, you can just, there's two lines. So you can yeah. add as many, as many as it'll fit. Um, and number two was um, when you were setting up the email addresses and the names, um, you need to actually proactively select the signature order. Just because you put them in, in the order that you thought you were putting them in, you have to actually identify them what order you want them to go out at. In the top box, see where it says set signing order? Right there. Then you yeah. got no so that's the way it is now. Sometimes you may want it in a different order. If you put them in that way, like you did, you put them in the order you wanted them. Sometimes if you put yourself in first, or you're just typing away and you put the buyers, whatever order you put them in, it will send it in the order that you input it. So if you set the signing order, then you can change the numbers. Change the, the numbers as it really, yeah. One, two, three. You may not want to be first. You, you may have put the buyer in first accidentally instead of the buyer's agent. You may have put the buyer or the seller in first. You don't necessarily want them to see it first. You may want to sign it first so you can review it. Correct, correct. So yeah, what, what Bernard's stating here is if this is blank, it's going to just go out. And whoever it gets it- at the same time. Correct, yeah. Whoever gets it can sign it, can view it, can do whatever they want. If you're in a scenario where you want to make sure that you get one signature by the next one, you're going to set it here and then these little grab bars can adjust. So if I say, Oh, you know what? I want to make sure that Nick sees this before Melissa, then I can move it here. Um, if I want to make sure that I see it lastly before it goes out, then these are set. If this box is not checked, then it's just going to go out to everyone at the same time. It's a shotgun. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Thank you, Bernard. I appreciate that. Um, okay. You can send it to, so you can send it to two, you can send it to yourself first and both buyers at the same time. You can have one, one and two twos. Yeah, and, and here's, um, <laughs> here's an interesting dynamic to a lot of things. If you're sending them out and you just want to double check and want to make sure of things, you can set a signing order. You can put as you, the agent yourself last. Um, and then when you're going through stuff, let's say it's a document that you don't even sign, just put like your initials tiny somewhere randomly in the document, you know, somewhere on a, on a random page. So when that goes out, the buyer's going to see it, the buyer's going to sign it, and then it's going to go to you to get final confirmation. So you can review everything they've done. So like on a hypothetical, like, you know, a TDS or, or I think you actually have to sign one of those, but on a form where necessarily your, your signature is not involved, you can always put an initial and then when it gets sent out, you can just finally review it. And if you have that set signing order, you're the last person to sign, you have to actually have some involvement. So it's just like kind of a little tip on some of those documents that maybe you're not necessarily involved in the buyers doing all this signing, but you just want to double check it at the end add an initial at the very end, set your signing order as last, and then you'll have final review. So just a thought. I like that. Okay, that, that's, that's all I know. That, that's my like three months of DocuSign training and understanding. Uh, Bernard, you've been awesome. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, like I said, Lisa and Francis, you, you, um, appreciate the open questions, especially as a rookie, it's always- How many, I have a question. Yeah, Carlos. Uh, so you mentioned that you need to receive the form first before you send it out. Uh, how do you do that to, to make sure the template, you, you get it before anybody else? Um, yeah, so in, in regards to the template, you're populating the information. So Carlos, let's say you, you're my client um, and I am in zip forms, which I'm right in right now. You and I are working together. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file for you. Um, so if I have transactions, I want to create a new document. Um, let's say Carlos is somewhere in here and I open it. I'm going to create that cover sheet first, have your information simple as just your name to begin with. 
Um, so I can just kind of open this. Once that is created, the cover sheet, then any form that I create from zip forms <clears throat> should populate that general information that I've put into the cover sheet. Now from there, depending on what forms and how I want to handle them, I need to add either signatures to specific areas and spots. One of the reasons we're talking about templates is because moving forward, what that'll minimize is your need to go through every single document and put signature here, date here, initial here. If you create a template for that form, like you saw, it takes unfortunately a little bit of a delay, but DocuSign will say, hey, we've seen you use this form before. Do you want to populate it with one of these templates? Um, once you populate it with the template, it will put in what you've done before with the buyer signature, with the seller signature, with your signature for when they get sent out and you sign. Did that kind of answer your question? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, like I said, I think there's been some tremendous questions. Um, you know, try to just play around with it and figure out what works comfortably for you. My big goal with this is in those scenarios where you say, hey, you know, can we see a property today? Can, can you do this for me right away? Because um, in most cases, I'm going to try to tell you, use your TC, save your time. Um, I've gone through deals without a TC and I've gone through deals with a TC. It's incredible the amount of stress um, that you deal with, which you shouldn't. That's just the simple case of it. But if it's a weekend or off hours and you need to come up with a document, it's really nice to have those templates because it'll kind of, you know, dummy proof it for you. You've already gone through it once. You don't have to go through and check every box and drag everything, which is just time consuming and annoying. So. One of the things that just occurred to me, Dominic, was if you do set up those templates, then when you have, if you're not near your laptop and you have to do something on your phone and you can, and you have the apps for each of those, the DocuSign app and the zip form app, then you, just, then you just open it and you're going. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, again, I have been in scenarios where I'm, I'm trying to, you know, put the signature in the right place. And I, I realize it's up in the text box and, um, it just, it, again, it's going to be a little bit of work on the front end, probably a little bit more than if it was just a one-time deal. Um, but it saves a ton of time on the back end. If you just said, oh yeah, okay, we're going here. Perfect. Let me just put that in there. Okay. We're ready to go. Um, I know I've had to do a couple P forms basically on the road. Um, when I've had to say, what about this one? What about this one too? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can do it. So, um, just trying to play it around, make it more efficient and easy for you guys. I put the cover sheet in that same category as setting up templates. Use the cover sheet. It's ridiculous. It's so, it's so beneficial. And, and that's, that's a, it's kind of that same dynamic. The cover sheet takes a little bit of time to kind of fill out. It's a little bit annoying, but then it populates everything. So this is, this is a similar dynamic. There, there's, like I said, kind of two components to paperwork for us. It's the initial putting the information in there, and then the secondary asking for signatures and initials in the right spot. So the cover sheet does all the population of the information, client's name, um, and then secondary to that, utilizing templates within DocuSign will populate all the correct signature places and initial places. Um, so you can utilize DocuSign or inter, um, access DocuSign through command in this case, the majority of what I'm doing is I'm actually just accessing it through either zip forms through e-signature, or I'm just opening uh, my own web browser into DocuSign. Um, eventually, it'll be within command and opportunities. So you're almost going to have kind of a similar dynamic. You're going to have those files there, and there's going to just be a link to DocuSign through there. What in command is going to help us with the zip form? Is zip form going to be in command? That's a great question for someone like Chris. Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure the actual integration yet. I, so from what I've seen, all the forms are in command when you're doing your transactions. Like it has a separate 
it has a separate tab and it's all the forms that the office requires and is required for a transaction. That's just what I've seen from the mastermind that we had with Luann last week because she was talking about how um, her team uses it in opportunities right now. That's just the KW forms, not the CARC forms. Right. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. My belief would be it will get to the point where it should auto populate kind of similar to what you have to do right now within zip forms is let's say you've got a trust sale and you can create a template for trust documents, trust advisory, you know, SPQ, TD, like just all those stuff. Um, so hopefully at the integration of that, which may take a little bit of time, but you can just populate those things. Um, and like I said, DocuSign slash command has rooms which can function like a cover sheet. You basically put all the information for that client file and then it will populate all those documents. It's stuff that I haven't dealt with and worked with yet because um, I'm going to focus on zip forms and DocuSign because th that seems to work efficiently. Um, so, yeah. Thank I you would, for I would say to Francis, Francis, check with the office to see if they can switch you. Check with Kat to see if she can switch your paid DocuSign account to your free DocuSign account. Absolutely, yeah. You, you're going to have to get, um, I know that there was quite a few guys like Ryan Nunnally who had to do it in the, earlier in the year. Um, you I know. did. Thanks, yeah. I appreciate it. I, I've already paid, but I'll try and see if we can move it over. Yeah. Okay, guys, I think that is about the extent of my time. I appreciate it.